In this video we are going to do confidence and prediction intervals for linear regression and for sigmoidal or logistic curves. The simplest way possible. In this simple situation these are my observed values x and y. I plotted them in here, those are the observation points. We calculated according to a linear equation, we calculated what the values would be what we expect. That's going to be on this line. You can either do that with a curve in Excel and then use this parameter value which is the slope plus the intercept or you can use the trend function. Then we are going to calculate the confidence interval according to this equation and the prediction interval according to that equation. And it's going to look like this very soon. So what do we need to do? In order to get all these variables, we need to do some calculations. First of all, we have to know what the degrees of freedom are. They are the number of cases minus 2, because we have two coefficients, the slope and the intercept. Then we calculate the critical t-value with the t-inverse function at a 5% confidence level, the degrees of freedom, j7. Then we need the mean of the x-values. Then we need the sum of the squared values between every x value minus the average x value, which is j9. So the formula would look like this. a2 through a16 minus j9 to the power of 2. Uh, don't just click on OK, but do Control shift enter This is an array function. Uh, if you don't like array functions, you could have also used the function devsq and it will just ask you for the range x and it will automatically calculate the differences between each value and the mean value. Finally, we need SE in the formula, the standard error of x versus y. So we use the function STEXY. It does that automatically for you. Or of course, you can use an array function on your own. Okay. Once we have those values, we are going to use this equation in column D and column E. In D plus everything and in E minus. So here is the formula we are using. Notice that I used a lot of string signs, or maybe you call them dollar signs, but it's a string sign that locks sometimes the column indicator, sometimes the row indicator. Why did I do that? So I can copy the formula down and I cop can copy it way to the right. All I have to do then is adjust the formula very easily. So in this case, I did what I showed you here, which is basically this equation. I copy it downwards. I copy it to the right. Just to show you a simple trick, all I have to do now is highlight that new range and change the plus into a minus and do control enter, not control shift enter, but control enter and that gives me the value. Had you copied it to the right column and the fourth column, it you would also have to change this value 1 plus 1 divided by n. Once I have all of that, I add this information to the curve. I won't explain to you how you do that. If you want to know how to do that, you have to go to either my book or my CD-ROM that has thousands of people to plot data in a chart very accurately, to do curve fitting and to do statistical analysis. You can find it at genesispc.com. So here I added all of that. So it, it's clear what the outer boundaries mean. Those are prediction intervals. It says we have a 95% confidence that if you do this again, results may vary, that that value will be very unlikely, but it has still a 5% on each side uh, um, probability. Mostly 
they will be between the those prediction intervals. What is the confidence interval for? It basically says that your linear regression line will be always with a 95% confidence inside that range. So the, the, it could be this curve, the red one that goes way up, and the red one that goes a little more down and way up there. Similar story for sigmoidal. It's a little more complicated because Excel doesn't do that on its own. The sigmoidal one can be done with the Boltzmann equation, which I put here. It has two variables, the halfway value and the slope value. So these are my two parameters for that equation. I don't know whether they are correct. So it's an educated guess, and I will later on make it better. But how can we improve that by making sure that we get the R-squared value? The R-squared value gives you a measurement for the fit. That should be as high as possible. That means as close as possible to 1. So it's not close enough yet because my educated guess is not good enough. So I used in here the Boltzmann equation speaks for itself. But before I'm going any further, I want that curve, that is this one, I want that one to be nicely hugging my observation points. We do that with solver after we have calculated rs squared. How do you calculate rs squared? You can do that with a function, but not in this case, because we want solver to check everything. So I used this formula. 1 minus the sum of the square differences between x and y divided by the sum of the square differences of the y values minus the average, the mean y value. It's an array function again. Control, Shift, Enter. Then we use Solver. If you don't have Solver installed yet, you go to File, Options, Go to add-ins, go, and make sure that solver add-in is activated. Once it's activated, you can just go to data, and there is solver. In solver, you have to set a few things. The first thing you need to set is what is your objective. That R S squared is as high as possible, max. By changing the two parameter values that I guessed on my own, we have to add two cons constraints. The first one is that the halfway value should be less than 60. The second one, it should be more than 40. And then I'm going to solve everything. Solve and see how it nicely found if, the, if you have this halfway and that slope R squared is as best as possible. And there are the two curves again, two sets of curves, the prediction interval and the confidence interval. So my curve will be with a 95% confidence inside those two boundaries and individual values will be with a 95% probability there. So we calculate again confidence interval plus the expected value and minus, and then the prediction interval, etc. The formulas are the same again. Use those two equations. In order to do so, I have to find the critical t-value again. I have to find the mean of the axis. have to find the sum squares of x versus the mean x, or use DEVSQ. And the standard error you can find for x y as s t e y x once that is done i get all of that i canceled this so this is not correct so 45 is not the halfway value but let's assume it was the halfway value i put a link to it here for now i want to find out what would be my confidence limits for that halfway value So I have to find out where is 45. It's between 34 that I observed and 40x. Don't type those, of course, for 45 is not correct. So how do I find that 43 is the previous one? I use the index function. 
and I say to index in the range of axes, find a match for A24, which is that halfway value in the range A2, A20, and match type 1. That means I want to find the previous one in an ascending order. Okay. The, what is the next one? It's the same formula. The only difference is that this time I have to say plus 1. I want the next one. And in between those two, I should find that halfway value. So what is the corresponding y value? We have to find out what would be between those two values the halfway, the, the y value. So I use here what is the corresponding one with 43, that one, but we don't type it of course. We look it up with index again. That's what index did, but now I'm looking in column 2. The next one is the same story. I look in column 2. And now I have to find what would this value be. That is between this and that. If there were a linear relationship between those two closest observation points. Make sure you have the closest observation points. So I use trend that, that looks up what the linear relationship would be. Between point 0.3 and point 0.4 for the known y's. The known axis is 43, 48. The new axis is A24, that is that halfway value. Okay. And once I have that, all I have to do is copy these three formulas down. Control C, Control C, and it will find out what my confidence limits are for that halfway value, which could be if you are doing IC50 and EC50 determination, which, which would be the range for your halfway value with a 95% confidence. So all I have to do now is let's solve or find again the correct from information for the two parameters. I solve it and I found that halfway value. Here it's rounded from 52.68 to 53. That would be the corresponding y value. Okay. So Boltzmann would find this one if it were following the trend line, the curve, and these would be the confidence limits. If this is too much for you to digest, these two tools will definitely help you, as they have done for thousands of other users. You find them at genesispc.com.